Where does innovation come from? What sparks the light in an inventor's mind that initiates the sequence of thoughts leading to the grand crescendo of a great discovery? Well, some would say there are no new ideas, just tweaks and edits to existing concepts and technologies that can lead to something that will change the world. Well, today we're going to dissect a discovery in the world of flow cytometry. We'll see how the use of acoustical forces to focus, count, and study both cells and particles came to be. Now, as you might guess, it's not a simple story. Instead, it's a journey through the history of studying sound waves, starting with a device created back in 1866 to measure the speed of sound. This experiment led to a series of discoveries that culminated in the invention of the world's first acoustic focusing cytometer, the Attune. But why would you use sound instead of conventional methods? Well, hang tight. We'll get to that because the answer lies in the history. To begin, we need to voyage back to 1826, where Jean-Daniel Collodin, a physicist, and Charles-Francois Sturm, a mathematician, carried out an experiment on Lake Geneva designed to measure the speed of sound in water. They positioned two boats 10 miles apart. On one boat, they had synchronized the flash of light with the tapping of a bell that was underwater. Ten miles away, on the other boat, they measured the time between the arrival of the flash of light and the arrival of the sound. Using these crude techniques, they were fairly accurate, but history writes that others continued to obsess over the perfect way to measure the speed of sound in different materials. Forty or so years later, enter German physicist and professor August Kundt. He designed experiments using what he called a dust figure, found in organ pipes. By measuring the placement of where these figures settled after sound was removed, he could measure the wavelength. With this, he could calculate the speed of sound using the frequency of the sound he had applied to the end of the glass pipes, thus the invention of Kunt's tube. Kunt directed sound into a pipe like this. Now, you'll notice that what happens here is that the dust accumulates in discrete areas called nodes. At these nodes, there's little energy and little acoustical force. Once you find the nodes, you can measure the wavelength. Kuntz's tube was an innovative device developed from a series of observations and previous discoveries. But what does the measurement of sound have to do with using sound waves to focus cells and other particles? Well, to answer that question, we need to fast forward to 1989. A young graduate student named Greg Kaduchik was working on his master's degree. He was studying catastrophe theory, an area of study within singularity theory. What is a singularity, you might ask? Well, for example, a water droplet in a rainbow is an instance of a singularity. As it's suspended or levitated in the air, it has the ability to diffract or break light down into its basic wavelengths. That same droplet, when adhered to a surface, no longer has those properties but only levitated freely could Kaduchik use particles as an example of a singularity. So, to study the phenomenon effectively, Kaduchik needed an instrument to levitate particles. Nothing had been developed to that point to address his particular needs. So Kaduchik hit the books yeah. and was able to dig up Kuntz's research and the details of the tube. He used what he learned to apply this knowledge in a whole new way. Now, instead of applying the sound to the opening of the capillary or the tube, as Kunt had done, Kaduchik applied it to the side. In this scenario, the sound waves pass across, through the center of the capillary, and then bounce back with the same pattern. Because the capillary is round, no matter where the waves hit, they always pass through the center. In this way, a potential or energy minimum is generated in the center of the capillary, and particles with acoustic contrast migrate to the center and are held there. Anytime a particle wants to migrate from the center, it will be pushed back into place. The system is closed, and the energy is maintained largely within the capillary such that continuous energy need not be applied to the end of the tube. With this small tweak, Greg Kaduchik put innovation into action, taking the technology that was used for sound measurement and building upon it to create an entirely new technology with a different purpose. 
A few years later, as a PhD level scientist, he was brought into the Los Alamos National Laboratories to work on other things that were of interest to the US government. Now, while he was there, he came across Gary Saltzman, a very well-known cytometrist. Gary asked Greg if he'd like to try to apply this new insight to particle focusing in flow cytometry. Greg answered, I'd be happy to, but what's flow cytometry? Well, conventional flow cytometry uses hydrodynamic focusing to move and maintain particles or cells at the center of an interrogating laser's path. This system uses a rapidly moving sheath fluid to pull particles or cells into a central core and then to pass them in front of a laser that can then read scatter and fluorescent signals from the particles or cells. The challenge with the system is that as more sample is added, the core increases in diameter, potentially forcing cells to pass through less intense peripheral regions of the laser's path. Effectively, this approach limits the amount of sample that can be passed to a maximum of about 150 microliters per minute. Not bad, but not great. It was time to innovate. The difference with acoustic focusing is that to a great extent, focusing is decoupled from the lateral movement of cells. In this way, particles or cells are focused in the acoustic device prior to entering into the manifold, where they're met with sheath fluid. With acoustic focusing, sample rates can be increased by over 10 times compared to hydrodynamic focusing instruments while still maintaining focus. So, what was originally a bootleg project ultimately became an official project in Greg Kaduchik's lab. He was eventually joined in his efforts by two other scientists, Mike Ward and Greg Goddard. And together, they worked to advance this technique of making stable capillaries that are the key to using acoustics to focus particles, cells, and bacteria in the center of a capillary. In 2005, Kaduchik and Ward started their own company in Los Alamos in order to build the world's first acoustic focusing flow cytometer. In early 2008, Life Technologies, then in Vitrogen, a company known for not only developing new technologies, but also for scouting out the best innovations, went to Los Alamos to review the technology. Life Technologies saw something special and knew they could help provide the resources to quickly get this technology out to researchers. Life Technologies brought Greg and Mike's small company to the team and moved the technology and the scientists to the molecular probe site in Eugene, Oregon. 17 months later, this dynamic team of flow experts and molecular probe scientists delivered the Attune acoustic focusing cytometer based on the principle of particle wow. movement using acoustics. It was the world's first instrument to utilize this technology one built upon a series of sound-related discoveries. And now you know how an experiment on a boat in the early 1800s triggered a series of events that ultimately opened new doors in flow cytometry research. Now that this innovation has made it to the lab, what new innovations will this lead to in your world?